We believe in America. Thank you so much. If you didn't watch any of the coverage of Tuesday's Republican primary in Florida, the morning headlines on Wednesday said it all. A definitive victory for Governor Mitt Romney. Over 761,000 Florida Republicans voted for Romney in the primary, and he has also found some solid support among Florida's top brass in Tallahassee, including Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi. She sat down with me for an exclusive and extensive one-on-one -on -one interview Wednesday on the docket. First off, um, Attorney General Pam Bondi, thank you so much for joining us on the docket uh, this afternoon. Obviously, we want to get started with talking about the obvious question on everyone's mind. Last night, Governor Mitt Romney had a decisive win over Newt Gingrich, uh, winning 46% to 32% of the Republican voters here in Florida. Ended up being over 760,000 Republicans voting for Mitt Romney in the primary here in the state. What do you think was the momentum change between South Carolina 10 days ago and coming into Florida yesterday? Well, as you know, I've been traveling with Governor Romney all over the state. I've been introducing him all over the state. And he, the momentum throughout the state has been incredible. And he has done such a good job. And I'll tell you, he has taken Florida seriously. He has been working hard in Florida for well over a year. Um, so he knows that the road to the White House goes through Florida. And I think it's the fact that, that Floridians care about jobs. We care about our economy. We've got to get out of this recession. And I think they know that Mitt Romney is the candidate who has the executive experience, the only candidate who has the executive experience of running the state, as well as the business experience in the private sector to lead our country and our world out of this recession. Republican cabinet, obviously, uh, with yourself, Adam Putnam, and some of the other members, including Jeff Atwater, and Romney actually named you and the rest of your cabinet uh, specifically in her intro to her husband's victory speech last night. What was the big deciding factor for you all in endorsing Mitt Romney over any of the other candidates? Well, I, I, again, I, I took this, um, I, I thought a lot about it, and, and I firmly believe that Mitt Romney is the most qualified candidate. And he has the executive experience, the business experience, and he is the person who can beat Barack Obama, and he can lead our country out of this recession. And, you know, I sat with Ann Romney, actually, at the D Tampa debate, and that was very stressful, of course, sitting with the candidate's wife. Um, and she's just a truly, a truly wonderful person. And I'm blessed to have gotten to know such a great family and hopefully the next presidential family. And I couldn't help but seeing last night, I was watching a lot of the primary coverage, when they went to Newt Gingrich's uh, celebration party, if you can call it that, uh, Bill McCollum, who was your predecessor as Attorney General, was on stage endorsing uh, Newt Gingrich. Uh, is there a split, do you think, in the Republican Party in Florida that can't be mended uh, in some way between Governor Romney's camp and Newt Gingrich's camp? No, no, not at all. I, I think, you know, and I think the world of General McCollum, I, I hugged Bill when I saw him recently and his wife, and I, th I think he and um, Newt go back many, many years in Congress together, but the majority of, of the Republican leadership in Florida, Jeff Atwater, our CFO, Adam Putnam, our Ad Commissioner, um, Will Weatherford, our Speaker-designee, John Thrasher, Senator Thrasher, Mike Herodopoulos, our Senate President, I could go on and on. Um, much of the leadership throughout Florida, we have all stood um, firmly behind Mitt Romney and we will continue to do so through a general election. Moving on to the health care debate, Obamacare front and center uh, in this campaign, also when you ran for Attorney General uh, in 2010. The Obamacare people, a lot of Democrats and Republicans are both saying that the system that Governor Romney put in place in Massachusetts was the precursor to the Obamacare uh, system. Obviously, you're fighting that along with the other attorney generals, attorneys general in states all over the country. What do you tell voters is the dividing line between the system that Governor Romney put in place and the difference between Obamacare if they decide to vote for Governor Romney or President Obama? Well, first let me tell you, uh, the majority, there are 26 states, led by Florida, 25 other states have joined in with us, and of those states, the majority of the states who have signed on to that lawsuit, whether it be attorneys general or governors, 
but the majority of the states have endorsed Mitt Romney for President of the United States. And, you know, Governor Romney has said the first thing, we've had lengthy conversations about this, and he has said the first thing he will do is do everything in his power to repeal the federal health care mandate, as, as well as have all the other Republican candidates. So I commend them all for that. But hopefully it won't come to that, because we're working very, very hard. We have three days in front of the United States Supreme Court, March 26, 27, 28, five and a half hours. And Felix, you know as an attorney, that's unprecedented for a modern day Supreme Court. To take the so, time for such an absolutely. issue. Absolutely. So it's truly um, a question of great national importance. And as states, um, we will have a decision sometime in June. With Governor Romney, does he feel that the, the system that he put in place worked for essentially Massachusetts, but on a national stage it's not what he essentially intended? Is that what the voters can take away from that? Well, and that was something that he did in his state that affected 8% of the people um, in his state. What, what you do in one state doesn't work in another state. That's why we cannot have a federal health care mandate, a takeover. The federal government is trying to order every person in this country, every single person, to purchase a product, and if we don't purchase that product, simply by being alive, we will be fined or penalized. And that would put Florida out of business. It would cost our state billions of dollars, and it's unsustainable. Uh, one other focus of your administration is the fight against pill mills and prescription drug abuse here in the state of Florida. Uh, we've seen a lot of laws be, being passed since you and Governor Scott uh, took office. More laws went into effect, a different part of the law actually, uh, in January. Where do you see the fight going forward from here through the rest of your administration and even in the next couple of years? And Felix, you and I know as career prosecutors how bad that the drug problem is, not only in Florida, but throughout the state. But something I didn't know until I really got around the state of Florida was how bad the prescription drug problem was. We have seven Floridians a day overdosing from prescription drugs. And they had tried for over six years to pass legislation and couldn't do it, and it was absolutely ridiculous. So I'm blessed to work with a um, conservative Senate, conservative House, and a great governor. We all worked well together, and we were able to pass and else what I believe is some of the toughest legislation in the country. Um, to give you an example, uh, you, everybody's heard of Commercial Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale. Right. That's the big spring break place. There were 26 pill mills on Commercial Boulevard. Now there's one, and that one's probably gone by now. Wow. So that your initiative is really actually yes. on the ground taking effect. And then, the, and then Governor Scott started a strike force along with me. And what we did, we, we, it's got to be a partnership. And you know this as being a prosecutor. Mm -hmm. State, local, federal government all working together to fight this fight. I mean, when one child dies, that's too many. And when we're having seven Floridians die a day, we knew we had to stop it. And so, so what we're doing is we're continuing to crack down using our great law enforcement officers throughout the state. And we have tough new laws now. We're going after these drug dealers wearing white coats. We're shutting them down. We're putting them out of business. We have a dispensing ban. We have the prescription drug monitoring program, which you know I firmly, firmly stand behind. The flip side of this problem is also we're seeing a lot of children, newborn babies that are being born addicted to prescription drugs. How is that problem becoming an epidemic, not only here in Tampa, but across the state? Neonatal intensive care unit nurses have reached out to me. And just to give you the statistic, at All Children's Hospital in St. Petersburg, 30% of the babies going through the neonatal intensive care unit are born addicted to prescription drugs. 30%? 30%. 20% at St. Joe's. St. Joe's in Tampa had to expand their NICU because of this horrible problem. So I have legislation proposed this session to create a task force. I said to a neonatologist, a great doctor, I said, Doc, we can't let this become the next crack baby epidemic. And he said, Pam, we've already surpassed it. What do you think is going to be the remedy for that a situation like that? Do you target you know, the mothers? Do you charge them criminally? Uh, is a situation where um, Department of Children and Family steps in? Uh, what is it exactly what happened to those children so that we can save them and give them a chance at existence. And those are all the questions that we want to answer in our, in, in our task force. You know, I went to D.C., I met with General Eric Holder about this, I've met with Gil Kurlikowski about this 
multiple times, and I want Florida to be the prototype state for stopping this horrible issue. But no, is the goal to come in and pull these kids away from these mothers? Absolutely not. We're working with DCF, we're working with the Florida Board of Medicine, we're working with pediatricians, we're working with OBGYNs, we're working with nurses, we're working with hospitals, and that's what we want to do. I think the main component is probably going to be education. I've reached out to my friends who are adoption lawyers, and they say, you know, some of these women come in and say, listen, they'll, they'll frankly say, I've given up drinking, I've given up drugs. They don't even think to say, I've stopped taking pills because of the word prescription. Switching gears to the housing market now, we want to talk about mortgage fraud. It's one of the cornerstones of your campaign uh, in 2010. You've also uh, spearheaded prosecutions and made that a priority uh, within your administration to curb the problem and really turn the tide. Talk to us about uh, where you see that going and is there an end in sight to this problem? Well, we are working so hard. Our prosecutors are going after these guys. I'm, I'm sure you read the press releases almost constantly that, that we are cracking down on foreclosure fraud. There's also these foreclosure rescue scams um, that, that are just as bad. We just made a huge case against one of those. So our statewide prosecutors, um, all of our prosecutors are working on that issue. We've, one of my, what I made Richard Lawson, chief of my white collar unit, and, um, and his only instructions were to go after the bad guys, go get them. And Richard Lawson, you know, is a former prosecutor, right. and he's been doing a great job. Um, we have more than doubled the size of that unit. I think, I think we've quadrupled the number of investigators, and we're still adding to that unit because, unfortunately, you know, during tough economic times, we know crimes change. And people go after our most vulnerable citizens and people that, you know, your home is your most prized possession. And that's so important to you. And we're going to do everything we can to protect our consumers and to help them from being victimized by these predators. And they truly are predators. And speaking of consumers and homes, one of the stories that we've been following closely on the docket, uh, development up in Suncoast Meadows and Land Lakes. Obviously, there was a story that came out in TBO.com and also on News Channel 8. We actually did a story about it ourselves here on the docket where some homes have apparently been built on top of a landfill uh, in Suncoast Meadows, unbeknownst to a lot of the homeowners. I know some of the homeowners have reached out to your office. Uh, what is being done in terms of going forward with any investigations on the statewide level? Yes, and, so, and that was a great story, by the way. Thank you. And, you know, you could be saving lives by doing that. And Senator, Senator Fasano reached out to us, and we directed him to the appropriate agencies. First, DBPR, the Department of Profession, Business and Professional Regulation, as well as the Department of Environmental Protection because they are the ones who have to come in. That does not, those agencies do not fall under my office, but I will help anyone any way I can. So we have directed them to those two agencies to come in to work with them and to see exactly what the problem is and what we can do to hopefully save lives. Of course, uh, I wouldn't be a good journalist if I didn't ask you about your aspirations and where you <laughs> see yourself uh, in a couple of years. You've said all along that you want to stay Attorney General and get reelected uh, to a second term in 2014. Where do you see yourself in 2018 uh, after you're done being Attorney General if you get reelected? Coming right back home to Tampa. You know I love Tampa. I'm from Tampa. And, um, and I, I, I think um, I have a lot more to do as Attorney General. There's about 100 things I want to do every day. But unfortunately, a lot of our job is reactive, you know. Um, given all that, I could go on forever about all the legislation we're working on this term, human trafficking, timeshare resale fraud, voyeurism, um, so many issues. But um, I just want to be the best attorney general that I can be for seven more years if the people will have me. Excellent. Pam, thank you so much. I thank appreciate you, it. Thank you, Felix. Thank you. And you're doing a great job on the docket. Thank you. All right. This is Attorney General Pam Bondi, and you're listening to on the docket with Felix Vega on hawkradio.com.